You ready? Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. My name's Gabby. And I'm Charlotte. And this, this is the EV9. It's our very, very first arrival here at our dealership. It arrived yesterday, literally as we were filming our live mm -hmm. video, Charlotte. So we're really excited to talk about it. We're excited to show it. And we're excited to go over why we do these videos. Yes. So fair warning, if you are new to this channel, if you've never watched one of our videos before, our intros are long. They're very long. And why is that, Charlotte? <laughs> they are long because we are a real dealership. So first, before we get into it, I'm just gonna say, if you are new, if you're watching this video in the future, skip to about the three minute mark. That's when we're gonna get into the walk around. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this video, we also do a dedicated time to answer some questions, whether they're commonly asked questions or just your questions for those of you who are on the live. So stick around for that too. Mm -hmm. Now, that fun. <laughs> yes. Now, as Gabby said, we do these videos for three different reasons. The first reason is for those of you uh, who own Kia or Hyundai product, we want you guys to be the own experts on your own vehicles, which is why we offer tips and tricks, everything along those lines. Mm -hmm. The second reason, Gabby, what is it? So reason number two is if you are in the market for a new vehicle, we want you to add Kia or Hyundai or both to your selection list. We think these vehicles offer great value and that's why we do these videos to talk to you all about that. The third reason that we do these videos is for those of you who live in Ontario, I will preface that, which is in Canada. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we want to get you into your dream Kia or Hyundai. So if you want to actually purchase one of these vehicles, we want to help you out. We're a real dealership located here at Brantford, Ontario, as the sign behind me states. And then we have Owen Sound Hyundai and Brantford Hyundai as well. So if you guys want to get into any of those cars, mm -hmm. let us know. We want to help you get into them and uh, take care of you. Yeah. All right. We will start off with the exterior and the powertrain specs on this vehicle and I'm going to take that away. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about what the trim lines look like mm -hmm. for the EV9 because there's quite a few different options and each one may or may not appeal to you. This one is a great starting point, especially if you do live in Canada, because this trim is where you're gonna get things like the heat pump, um, as well as a heated steering wheel, and just a couple extra comfort features that we really, really appreciate having colder weather here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And then of course, it has the highest amount of range, or Ooh. the longest range. It's 489 kilometers rated, and this one is rear wheel drive. There are all wheel drive options, of course, but this one is where you're gonna get that huge chunk of range. So let's get into it, Charlotte. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the camera around, and we are going to focus on the exterior. So this trim is called the wind rear wheel drive. Right above this, we have the land all wheel and then it goes on and on and on. And hopefully we'll be able to fill those soon or film those soon. When it comes to the body style, it's just about the same on all trim levels. So think Telluride size. This SUV is huge and the best part about it is it's fully electric. It's our second vehicle based on the eGMP platform, so our global modular pla platform. So think the EV6. And it's our first full SUV. The EV6 was an SUV, but this one, there's no doubt about it, it's an SUV. Three rows of seating, so we'll get into that in a few minutes, but let's talk about the front end and its styling. For our headlights, the design, unmistakably beautiful. It's gorgeous, it's modern, and it's bright. Every single light in that is an LED. So your low beams, your high beams, your daytime running lights, your positioning lights, all of it. Full LED. Um, you can expect great cutoff and of course very very bright brightness and there's also great tech features involved into the headlight unit just like your intelligent high beam assist meaning that as I'm driving with my high beams on if the vehicle detects another car it's going to turn them off until it's safe to shut them back shut them back on turn them back on again. There's something that's really exciting especially considering that this one's a rear wheel drive and it has to do with what's under the hood so let me pop that for you guys. I'm actually going to invite Charlotte over here just to show you what our new hood release looks like. So it's not a traditional kind of latch where you pull it. We have a button and it's a two press to unlock and then it's going to pop open for us. We of course actually have to lift it. But I'll show you what that's like. This is of course very German inspired. Give it a lift. It's hydraulic so it opens nice and easy and stays open. Take a look at that frunk. There's a lot of frunk over there. <laughs> So it actually has a weight restriction of 85 pounds, meaning you could put a small child in there and it's okay because there is a hood release or a frunk release right in here. Don't do that. I'm joking, don't do that. But seriously, there's a lot of room in there. We used to always joke about the Kia EVs in the past having such small frunks, but that's no longer the case. The EV9 is not playing any games. By the way, I'm probably gonna call this an EV6 a lot during this video. That's just because we're not used to having an EV9 to talk about. But you know what, I'm, well, you know what I mean, right? Trill it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, again, taking a look at the front grille, you may notice we have some ultrasonic parking sensors integrated into the front bumper. Now that's gonna be used, of course, when you're parking your vehicle. There is no mistake, this is a huge machine, and especially since it is an EV, chances are you're gonna be parking in parking garages or close to other vehicles or 
charging stations. <laughs> so these sensors help a lot. It's going to give you a vis visual and audible alert inside the cabin to let you know when you get too close to anything. On top of that, this car has a very advanced safety suite. So even though it's more of a standard trim level, you have just about everything you can think of and more. So think adaptive cruise control. It's going to slow down and take you to complete stop if you hit stop and go traffic. It's also going to know when there's curves in the road ahead of you and take that for you. So it's going to steer itself. It's going to maintain its speed. It knows the highway speed limit changes. It knows everything. It's a really smart car. Then back to styling. I want to talk about these wheels because they're different. We've never had a wheel style like this before. It's a 19 inch alloy with an aerodynamic wheel cover. So very interesting looking. I'm still getting used to them, but honestly, I have to say in motion. So when we move this vehicle into the video bay and just around the lot, it looks amazing, almost like a ninja star. It's a very, very cool design for sure. Another thing I will mention is just like the Telluride, which is kind of what this vehicle was inspired by, a mix of the EV6 and the Telluride, we have our extended, what, rocker panels? Charlotte, is that right? <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> um, when we open our doors up, you may notice that because the door is so long, it's going to cover this area, meaning that no mud or dirt should get over here. If you're wearing pants, you don't have to worry about your legs getting dirty as you enter or exit the vehicle. Little things like that, they definitely thought out, and I appreciate it. I'm just going to pop back over to the tires and just show how beefy they are, too. Oh, yeah, they're and thick. And the fact that they are EV tires, so check them out. Look at that. And yeah. let's see if the size is actually right there. Yeah, so 255.60 on 19 inches. So check those out. Mm -hmm. um, door handles do pop out when the vehicle is unlocked and then, of course, retract in when they are locked. <laughs> um, quite nice to see. I can't lock it right now because the hood is still open, but we'll show you guys that later. This paint color is called Snow White Pearl. We've had this on our vehicles for a very long time and it's always our best seller. So take a look, it looks amazing. Um, very beautiful when it's clean. And then of course in the sunlight, since it is a pearlescent paint, it's going to have a beautiful sparkle to it and lots of depth and definition. You wouldn't know that based on our video lighting, but trust me, it's there. All right, again, coming up to the back, we'll take a look at our cargo space and there's a lot of it. It is a smart lift tailgate, meaning that it's powered. You give it a push, either by the key fob or on the door itself. You can even walk up to this trunk, stand here for three seconds, and it'll automatically open for you if you turn that feature on. That's called our smart lift feature. It's okay sometimes. <laughs> it's hard to show at a dealership because we're always walking around our cars and we just don't want them to open all the time, but you may love it. Back here behind the third row, we have a decent amount of space, very, very similar to what we're used to in the Kia Telluride. So you can put some luggage here. Uh, me and Charlotte recently went to LA with a full Telluride of people and we fit luggage for five people in there. Yeah. It wasn't exactly comfortable, but that's a lot of luggage. And my mom brought two suitcases. Yes. <laughs> All right, back here in this um, cargo little storage thing, we have our level one charger. So we'll take a look at that. This comes complimentary with the vehicle. It's not the fastest way of charging, but it's great if you're going away for a long weekend and you're not sure what the charging situation is going to be like because you don't need any special wiring for that. It's just like plugging in your phone. You can use a household socket like that. It takes 84 hours. But don't worry, you're probably not going to be charging like that. We're going to be doing this. <laughs> Sorry, lots of back and forth today. But this charger right over here, this is our level two charger. This is what most of our customers are installing in their homes. And this will take you from 10 to 80%, no, 10 to 100% in about eight hours and 45 minutes. So just under nine hours. So this is typically what you'd be looking at if you do own an EV, which not bad. Charge door is right over here. I realized we didn't talk about it. Give it a push and it opens. You have your target state of charge right over here. So this is gonna show you just how much charge you have as a quick look. Um, everything illuminated means it's fully charged. And I'm happy to say it is also illuminated for your port so you can see what you're doing if you are plugging in your car at nighttime. So of course, all the um, from the second row and below, we do have um, the option to fold them down. So I have one side knocked over. I'll let Charlie get a closer look at that. You can see everything goes completely flat. There is gonna be a little bit of space between the sides. So there's a little gap, however, it's nothing too huge. Um, we do have cup holders and a USB-C on both the left and right side for your second row passengers, which is great convenience. And then if you do um, wanna knock down your second row from here, you do have the controls on the left side. I'll have Charlotte talk about the socket that's located just above that. All right, so check this bad boy out. We do have a nice little household outlet back here. So you're able to slide this over and easily access it along with your controls for the seats. 
And if you're curious about a uh, trunk release for the rear, we do have it right over here. Just lift this up and there's your release. There's also a 12 volt right over there for any smaller appliances. Um, on the topic of appliances and powering them with your car, there is vehicle to load with this vehicle. So if you plug it into your charge socket on the exterior, you can power other appliances with the Kia EV9. And at the auto show, they powered an entire house with one Kia EV9. It's amazing. So great if you uh, experience a lot of power outages or if you do a lot of camping, you can power, I don't know, a blender or whatever you may Coffee bring. Coffee maker hair dryer, <laughs> whatever you really want to do. There's tons of options with the Kia EV9. Um, one more thing I'll point out, your rear tail lights, they're all full LEDs. You have the high mounted stop lamp as well too, so located on your spoiler. The actual rear wiper is located underneath the spoiler as well too, so great for Canada where we get lots of ice because um, it's tucked away nice and safely and it's always going to be clean. Uh, rear parking sensors, EV9 badging on the left and just a beautiful look. I absolutely love it. I'm excited to see it come in more colors, especially um, the blue and the Panthera metal. I'm excited to see that. But Charlotte, do you think you're ready to... Wait, I didn't talk about horsepower or torque, right? All right, so I already said 489 kilometers of full electric range. This is exclusive to this trim level. You have 201 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, the towing capacity of 2,000 pounds, and what else am I missing? Oh, 99.8 kilowatts. Go. <laughs> All right, Charlotte, take a look inside. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so as we were doing this, I also just want to say we are seeing your questions that are coming in. Remember, there's going to be time at the end of the walk around to answer your questions, so keep putting them in the chat. It's really awesome seeing what you guys think about this vehicle. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to remind you that we currently have a giveaway going on for uh, about the next two and a half weeks until January 3rd, so head on over to at Brantford Kia to see how you could win a Kia or Hyundai jacket to celebrate 100,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, let's hop in. And as Gabby already stated, is I am not worried about getting any dirt on me because we have those extended rocker panels, uh, which is an excellent feature, especially if you were in the back seat trying to buckle your kid into a car seat. Oh, wow. Um, I've gotten many, many dirty pants because of that. Yeah, living in Canada, the amount of salt that builds up, especially there, it's ridiculous. It's insane. So this is a really helpful feature. <laughs> All right, so starting off, we're going to start with the driver's door. And there's a lot more on this door panel than what we usually see from Kia. So to first start, I'll have Gabby give an overview. We can see we have some more of that gun metal chrome. We have some flush black accents, some soft touch leather, everything like that. But the real party starts up top. Usually we would see something a lot like memory seats up here, but up here we actually have the controls for your seat. So heated seats and ventilated seats in the front, and then also your heated steering wheel control is on the driver's door. Mm -hmm. Now if we do move down, things are going to be a lot more uh, what we're used to. We still have mirror controls, lock, unlock, express windows all throughout the vehicle as well. And then as we move down, speakers and storage pockets for convenience. Now with our seat, you can see that we have lots of different ways to configure it as well. It is power adjustable and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ways. Whoa. And if you're curious as to what this dial does, if you don't have it on your vehicle, that is for your lumbar support. So if you're driving this vehicle for road trips, which I know there's a lot of anticipation about with this vehicle, especially with the range, you know that you're going to be sitting nice and comfy. Mm -hmm. Now, the seats, if you are curious, is they are in artificial leather. I'll have Gabby give a look over them. And I personally think that Kia and Hyundai do some of the best artificial leather in the game right now. And these seats, I was sitting them in them earlier, getting the opportunity to play around this, with this vehicle, and they are so incredibly comfortable. They genuinely feel like butter, and they squeeze you, and they keep you so comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hop in, and I'll have Gabby give a little bit of a pan of the cabin. Okay. So just want to quickly point out the screens. Right now, it looks like a fingerprint haven over yeah, there. Yeah, woof. Um, we'll get a better look at that one in a bit. But this vehicle has dual 12.3 inch displays, right? Mm-hmm. So just like the Kia EV6, right? But different. There's Very more. different. <laughs> we'll I'll, talk about that. <laughs> I'll just show down here real quick, and then we will talk more about the screens. So if you're curious as to what's going on over here, Gabby, of course, already showed the button for the trunk release. We do have your tailgate as well. If you'd like to turn off your traction control, electronic parking brake, and then also the brightness adjuster for your instrument gauge and charge door. I did see someone ask about all the ways you can open or unlock the charge door. So, and then of course you can touch it as long as the mm -hmm. car is unlocked from the outside. All right, come on over. All right. <laughs> we'll get a nice look at the wheel again in the front end. 
this vehicle, honestly, I'm looking at it on my phone right now as we're filming. It looks great, but it's so much more impressive in person. It's such a beautiful, beautiful machine. And turn signal repeaters on the mirrors as well. And blind spot detection. I realized I didn't mention that. But you guys know, Kia's standard with safety. We always have blind spot we detection. We love blind spot detection. <laughs> Um, before I hop in, I'll talk about the passenger seat. So it is, again, eight-way power adjustable. You get lumbar support. What more could you ask for? It's a very premium experience for everybody here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the amount of space that's in this vehicle is incredible. So when it comes to the EV9, um, because we don't really have anything else quite like it on the electric market, think Telluride. So when it comes to space, it's going to be very comparable to the Telluride. Um, it's about 10 millimeters longer on the exterior, maybe in the front, the max amount of legroom you lose maybe half an inch, but still tons of space, tons of headroom. And uh, look at even how premium this headliner looks. I mean, our camera quality is not really doing it anymore. Our camera justice. quality is not premium. That's why if you guys could please look this video, it means the world to us. It costs you nothing, but means everything to us. <laughs> Maybe we can get a better setup. Maybe we can get a better setup. Maybe. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about these screens because they are incredibly exciting. So as you can see in front of me, we have a 12.3 inch screen. That's our instrument cluster. And then we also have our infotainment center and sandwich in the middle of them is going to be our climate controls. So I love this because it doesn't look like there's a disconnect between really the three screens, um, but it's entirely seamless. It looks beautiful, it looks great. And you can see on our infotainment screen is you can actually set a password or a passcode for your profile. So I'll enter this one in. I set up a password for myself. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's me. And you can get the first look at this new software that we have too. But let's not get too excited about that. Let's talk about what we see on the steering wheel and the instrument cluster first. I'm going to tease something though. There's something in this vehicle that everyone's been asking for for years and mm -hmm. we've never had it. Uh, that's where I'll leave it. We'll talk about it soon. I don't have my phone on me. Oh, here, why don't you talk about this and I'll grab my phone. Okay, it looks like it's connected anyway. But yeah, let's take a look at the screens. So, um, like Charlotte mentioned, two 12.3 inch displays. This is what it's gonna look like for your home screen. So you get a glimpse of the map, media, and EV. The EV specific menu is gonna show you things like your closest charger, your total range. So right now our vehicle is at 98% battery, so not fully, fully charged. And we have 800, or 800, oh my goodness, 484 kilometers of range. We can also look at other statistics, like our electricity use, your range history, and your economy history. There's great features like your next departure time. You can schedule when you want to leave your vehicle or what your typical schedule looks like so your car knows, and you can set your climate to adapt to your leaving times. There's also an AC charger. You can select your current and um, schedule your charging, of course. Do your charging limit and then even play around with your vehicle to load settings all right charlotte you got your phone i did i thought i left it on the desk but it was just over there so oh. we're, we're lucky <laughs> <laughs> okay so guys long awaited is you can see that this vehicle it actually does have a wireless carplay and a wireless android auto mm -hmm. so let's be real this is something that has been hyped for so long and finally we have it what? <laughs> now, there have been a lot of rumors online that Google Maps or Apple Maps have not been working. That is not the case on this vehicle. They both work perfectly, absolutely normal. There you go. Gas station. Gas station. We're going to the SO. We don't need her. <laughs> yeah, we don't need her. <laughs> and then you can also see, um, I just did, did I do Apple Maps or Google Maps? I think you did Apple, there but we go. Google Maps is there too. And here is our Apple Maps. We can mm -hmm. zoom out. We can see where we are. That was not my home address. So if anyone is looking at that, don't go there because I don't live there. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> That's what I'm terrified in the, of in these videos. It's true though, you don't. <laughs> so now you can go and see, you can see your music, what you're recently playing. Big Marianas Trench fan I am. And big then, Canadian girl. Big Canadian girl. <laughs> and then also you can see that you can finally have it set up where you can see your nav updates and then also your music. You know what? Jeff made a point that it's very responsive and I'm Incredibly. typically, I'm usually a wireless CarPlay hater because I think mm. it's so slow. This is so quick. I'm impressed by this for sure. And that's something that we definitely want to touch on too. The entire screen is incredibly intuitive, incredibly mm -hmm. responsive. You're going to be really impressed with it. Yep. So to get simply back to your Kia screen, you just hit the Kia button there. You can see you can also set up your phone, voice memo, weather, your vehicle setup as well. So Gabby was gracious enough to go through all the safety features on the exterior of the vehicle. But if you want to play around them, make them uh, less sensitive, more sensitive, change some of the sounds or um, the 
noise of the sounds, mm -hmm. like how loud it is, the volume, that's what I'm looking for, you can do so by accessing this screen. Yep. Also, you have uh, things like your convenience, digital keys, doors, lights, climate, and drive modes. So something that is incredibly fun about this vehicle, and I'll show it too when we are looking at the steering wheel, is you can actually set a custom drive mode. We have not seen this before, so you can adjust um, the type of how, how responsive you want your braking, everything like that, optimized exactly for your driving style. So that is a great custom feature that you can have in this vehicle. Mm -hmm. If you haven't picked up on it, I think that this vehicle is actually really luxe, considering it is one up basically from the base. And I think that if you put a luxury brand on this vehicle, a lot of people would believe it and not necessarily think that it was Kia branded. Mm -hmm. So that's my hot take. Let me know if you agree, but. It was so hard to come into this car and think of things that I thought were missing mm -hmm. because I was just so impressed. I think it's incredibly well equipped. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other uh, options here I'll show on the screen, these are more so going to be used with your Kia Connect, which yes, of course it's equipped with. I can't really do too much with them just because we do not have Kia Connect set up because we don't get to keep this car, it's gonna go home, but that is okay. And then of course, map, media, EV. Moving over, we can see that we do have our climate control. So right now it's set up to access the front and still up at the top, you are able to access driver only. So if you are the only person driving this, you don't have to worry about heating or cooling the entire vehicle, just you to help save on that range consumption. And then you can switch to the rear to access the climate controls back there. Mm -hmm. Now, something that's nice is you're probably thinking, okay, it's gonna be pretty hard for Gabby to set the temperature that she wants from sitting right there. There are still toggles down here, so you can still cycle through the various different uh, media modes too, but also the temperature. Mm -hmm. And then up at the top, volume, the fan speed, and then temperature here too. Now, something that is incredibly interesting is we can see this lovely piece of trim, and on it, it's not really a button, but it is a button, and it does give a little bit of feedback too as you press it, but you can access home, which is gonna take us back to our screen. Mm -hmm map for nav, and I'm not sure if you can hear that little bit of feedback noise it's giving us. Your media, custom. So there you go. This is all the different ways that you can customize your vehicle, uh, whether you want for your custom buttons on the steering wheel and then also for the navigation, modes, everything along those lines, sensitivity. Also setup, it can jump you to that screen. But the feature that I think we are most excited for is the search button. Oh my gosh, this changed my life. <laughs> For the better. <laughs> For the better, yes, exactly. So we have never had the chance to spend a good amount of time in the EV9. We yeah. saw it at the auto show, but there was a bunch of people in it. Everyone All five wanted, minutes. Yeah, everyone wanted to film it. We didn't really get a lot of time. There's so much in this new CCNC, so car connected navigation cockpit, that basically the technology on the screen, that sometimes we just don't know where stuff is. Yeah, and you spend so much time trying to cycle through things, but by using this search button is you can search for points of interest, so through navigation, addresses, mm -hmm. um, but you can also search for features, contacts, various media. Yeah. So for example, I'm gonna search radio. Let's say I don't know how to access where my radio is. So not only is it gonna give me areas in navigation, but radio noises, HD radio, and then also your media. Is that so cool? That's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. I think that that is great for someone who may um, not spend a ton of time going through their screens. It's maybe if you're, you know, if you struggle a little bit more on the technology front, you're able to learn and access items a lot more efficiently and quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I guess let's talk about the instrument cluster. We should probably do that. Let's do that. <laughs> it's huge. Number one. <laughs> it is huge. So again, we are looking at that second 12.3 inch screen. On the left-hand side, we have a digital speedometer. And then also, this will more than likely be our, it's gonna be our EV, like yeah. your regen you levels, what? basically. Why don't I close everything up so we can get it to normal? That'd oh, be great. The trunk, <clears throat> hold on. I will be back. I will talk about what we got set in the, in the meantime. Okay. So in the meantime, you can see that from the steering wheel, we can still cycle through our different areas, usually. When it comes to ICE vehicles, is we have our media controls on this side, including usually that. Yep. <laughs> and then our driving controls, so it's messing me up a little bit, or, our, our, yeah, it's switched around, so that's always fun. But then you can also see your rated range. So now we're able to go and see that. Oh, let us know how our connection is going, because I just got a little bit of a... a notification yeah. that the internet was gone. <laughs> so that's super great, love to see that. But anyways, you got a good amount of time there to 
<laughs> look at the cluster, I guess. <laughs> the steering wheel, I did mention that it is heated. It's also leather wrapped and it is huge. It's very lightweight and is manual. It's manual uh, tilt and telescopic. So over here, I already mentioned, is going to be our driving controls. So your um, lane keep assist, your cruise control, all of those fun things, lane follow assist, radar based, and then also your toggles to adjust. On this side, we're going to have your media controls. So the mode button that you are able to set to custom, calls, volume, channel surf, media modes, and your virtual assistant. Now, if you do a quick press on this button, it'll just bring up Kia's assistant. And then if you actually hold it down, it will bring up your uh, smartphone, smart assistant, depending on if your phone is um, set up, hooked up to Bluetooth or not. And there's tons of things that you can do with your virtual assistant. It is insane. And we are working on a dedicated video to that. For example, if you have a power tailgate, did you know that you can open your power tailgate just by asking your virtual assistant? Huh, the more you know. <laughs> Now the button I am super amped about is always going to be our different drive modes. So let's take a look at these. So you can see that we have so many different options. We have Eco, Normal, Sport, My Drive, and Snow. So let me tell you why Snow Mode is so exciting because even though this vehicle is rear wheel drive, we still have an option for Snow Mode, which we don't usually see unless it's on an all wheel drive vehicle. Now also my drive, we showed that on the screen. This is where you're able to access it and adjust the sensitivity of braking to a style that is best suited and optimized for you. Other than that, we still have Eco, Normal, Sport and Smart and you can see how they change the display as well. And depending on how you wanna drive, if you want a little bit more of a sportier, aggressive response, you can put it in sport mode and have tons of fun. Remember the amount of torque that we get in EVs and how fun it is. Eco, obviously that's gonna to work to optimize your fuel no, not fuel economy. Can you tell how <laughs> used I am to saying that? Uh, your rated range and then normal, of course, is going to be the most uh, normal, comfortable mode, depending on what it is you're looking for. So anything else you want to add, Gabby? Um, I'll talk about, I don't know if you mentioned the paddle shifter. Oh yeah, we have paddle shifter. That's right. So three different levels of regenerative braking, plus the option of either mm -hmm. zero or eye pedal driving, which is going to be your strongest brake force and essentially allows you to do, yeah, one pedal driving. So as soon as you let off the accelerator, your car will come to a complete halt. Another thing that's interesting about this car is the transmission and the power button. It took me a good while. Honestly, I'm pretty embarrassed to admit how long it took me to turn this car on. Here's the start button. Not sure how I feel about the I location. I can't even see it from right there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, honestly, it's easier to see to the human eye as you're actually sitting in the driver's seat rather than us filming it. But you're gonna turn on your vehicle there and then it is um, a steering wheel or steering mounted column shifter. So you just tip it over to the right or to the front, sorry, for drive, to the back or reverse, you get the drill. And then you press P to engage your parking brake. It's difficult to film, so I'm so sorry if I'm giving anyone motion sickness by uh, <laughs> by doing that. There's a lot of, yeah, hard to film places, but I promise they're in areas that are easy to grasp as a driver or passenger up here. Absolutely. Um, I also think it's worth mentioning the amount of space. So like they said, this vehicle is based off the size of a Telluride. However, you do get a lot more legroom just due to the fact that it's a completely flat floor. Um, there's connectivity over here, so a USB-C. This one's going to be for either data or charging, so you can actually switch between its use. Charlotte, I might use your phone for flash, of if course. That's okay. Uh, our lights turned off. So, um, charging, connectivity and charging. Just charging over here, and then we get a 12 volt for, you guessed it, more charging. At the very bottom, there is a storage pocket, and this is huge, great for a lunch bag or any sort of purse or whatever you may have, um, even laptops and whatnot can fit there. This surface is almost entirely flat, so it does have a slight curve, but this is great if you do want to do some work from your car while you're charging because you can balance your laptop on their iPad, whatever you may have, and it'll just stay put and you have virtually a desk in your car, a workstation in your car. Huge cup holders, storage access here, fingerprint scanner. Um, we haven't had full access to that because this isn't our vehicle, but eventually, hopefully one day we will get an EV9 for our store and um, we can set our fingerprints to it to allow us to get enter our drive modes without selecting, not drive modes, oh my goodness, user modes without um, entering our password. And who knows if they'll release more features with that in the future. So wireless phone charger here. Charlotte, I'm totally taking over. No, you're <laughs> good, you're okay. good. Um, auto hold braking, downhill braking assist, 
our Park View camera. So when you give that a push, it's going to trigger your camera and it's gonna show you a live feed. Um, of course, our lift gate is still open. So right now that's kind of a weird view. You also down. have different views of your camera. Sorry, mm -hmm. I just cut you off, my friend. <laughs> okay. So currently this is one uh, that Gabby and I affectionately call your tow camera. So if you do oh, have a hitch, right. you can <laughs> see um, and have everything lined up as you are driving with it. But there are also the different views. So of course you have your traditional rear view with the dynamic guidelines. So as you are in reverse and you are turning the wheel, Th these lines are going to shift and show you where the vehicle would end up as it's turning. And then of course, also just a nice wide view if you want a little bit more of a vantage point. And look at how crystal clear that is, better than our video quality sometimes. <laughs> I can't believe we're at 30 minutes already. No, oh, are we? Yeah. Holy cow, There's so much to talk about. Oh my goodness. I think we're, we're definitely gonna have to do a secondary video yeah. on Friday. So maybe we'll base that one as a tech review. Mm -hmm. Or maybe should we do that as a space review? and finish off tech here because we've done a lot of tech. And then I'll put it in the comments. I think we're, we'll just keep rolling and then we'll <laughs> touch on something else on Friday, but it'll be in this car. Um, lots of space up here. Seriously, so much space. Look at the leg room over here. Wow. <laughs> um, also the front design, like the dash, I think it looks phenomenal, Charlotte. I think it's, it's great. It's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, you have tons of headroom. A lot of this is also made out of recycled material, which is very cool. Uh, specifically, a lot of the plastic and components on the dash that you may see. As we're moving down, I'll just show real quick that we do have our parking sensors. So Gabby pointed those out on the exterior of the vehicle. Here is where you can turn them on or off on the inside of the vehicle. And depending on what they're picking up, it also will show on here on the vehicle. It'll give you a little bar of light, block of light, whatever you want to call it. Floating console. Not too much of a, that was a disgusting way of saying not there. Wow. <laughs> um, not a ton of space there, but it is pretty well hidden which is nice, and then cup holders. So let's head to the rear. Yeah, let's check out the back. I'll take that from you. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna walk over here to get our motion sensor hopefully, lights back. <laughs> hopefully trigger the lights coming on. There we go. <laughs> it's a pretty advanced uh, system. <laughs> All right. All right, so welcome to the second row of the EV9. So first thing I wanna show is, do you wanna show the floor? Yeah. It is perfectly flat. 100% flat. So because this is built on that skateboard style platform and we don't have a, you know, a drive shaft running down the vehicle, you are able to utilize the perfectly flat floor, which is why when I say it's Telluride sized, you get a little bit more space because you are, ha you have more usable space. It's not a hump in the middle. So even if you're sitting in the, ugh, dress is a little tight. <laughs> Even if you're sitting here in the middle seat, you still have tons of leg room because your knees aren't to your chest. Now, also back here, you can see we got cup holders. You can see that we have our headrests, that double S coat racks, I'm privacy come pockets. Over to your side, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. Hey. <laughs> um, also back here, cup holders, two USB Cs, USB Cs. <laughs> And then also if you're sitting back here and you need to access and move the passenger seat, you can reach those controls from here. So yeah. look, you or can bring it forward or back. If you don't like who's sitting over there, you could just play around with their seat the entire drive. The entire drive, um, or road trip. There's something that is, you'll never see this in a brochure, but it is very interesting. <sighs> see how this is mesh? You can blow into the driver's ear or maybe the passenger. Yeah, <laughs> you can whisper to them. <laughs> It's a secret message uh, function. <laughs> I think that may be the, the one flaw of this vehicle. <laughs> yes, okay. You know what, don't buy the, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, little things like that. I think this back seat's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's not even the backest seat. The backest seat. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty official. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about up at the top. You do have uh, air vents. You also have your controls for the um, rear climate Sorry. control. You're good. I'm gonna get in here. Now let's talk about the fact that we have top air vents. I love these, especially having a child in a rear facing car seat, you're actually able to direct air towards them, which is excellent, especially because this is such a big vehicle and it's going to be one that'll probably be put up against the Telluride and the Carnival when it comes to parents and be your only option if you're looking for something purely electric too. Seats again are super comfortable. Down at the bottom, we have a little bit more space to put your phones if they are plugged in charging. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll show the center here. Cup holders, armrest, everything is pretty standard there. And yeah, I guess I should hop into the back, mm -hmm. shouldn't I? Into the third row. Oh, there's no seats up. I'll put them up from the rear. Okay. 
I'll show you guys a quick way to make these seats adjustable for your rear passengers to get in and out. So there's this little button right over here. You give it a push, pushes the seat forwards and lifts it up a little bit. It can still go a little further. I'll just oh, can you up. toss me the tether? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So these actually have Velcro in them to avoid situations like this, but we never latch them back into place. A real world scenario. <laughs> Welcome to the Kia Hyundai channel. All right, Charlotte, I'll let you get in there. Thank you. Ooh, I'll give her some privacy, oh. guys. <laughs> oh, I'm stuck. Your shoe's stuck. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but she's in. We're having a little bit too much fun. Yeah. All right, so in the back. Um, now, in this third row, if you are looking at the measurements online, you actually do have a little bit more space in the third row of the Telluride. Mm -hmm. So that is good to know, especially if you are mostly uh, carting around seven people. Back here, though, you still have tons of different features. Is you still have, um, you know, cup holders. You've got areas to for storage. Still have a USB-C. Also, a seatbelt clip, so you can clip this out of the way. That way, you're not getting stuck on it. It's and yeah, on. same thing on the other side. Speakers, everything like that. Hopefully, I'll have better luck getting out of it than I did getting into it. Mm -hmm. It's not actually hard. It's just it's clean and it's a little slippery. And your shoes. <laughs> and my shoes don't make it super practical. All right. So oh, you don't need to film me getting out. Don't okay. worry. <laughs> Let's look at the taillights. <laughs> All right. Now, I know today's video is quite a bit longer. We're actually at 35 minutes now. Maybe we'll dedicate five minutes to answering questions. Yeah, let's do some questions. And then I promise we'll do an in-depth Q&A on Friday's live video. Also, price point is probably something we should talk about. Like I mentioned, this one is not the entry level to the Kia EV9. The uh, entry trim is called the light rear wheel drive. This one is wind rear wheel drive and it's priced at $62,995 Canadian and they qualify for the $5,000 federal rebate. Okay. <laughs> we all had 911 on standby for you getting out of the car, Charlotte. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Lots of questions today, lots of people on. It says that there is 253 people on right now. Wow. If you're on and you haven't already liked today's video, we would totally appreciate it if you left a like. Um, it really helps support our channel and hopefully add to our marketing budget for a better camera in 2024. Woohoo! That's our goal. <laughs> um, so many comments, oh my goodness. Oh, you're sifting through those. I'll show the key real quick. Yep. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely past the 35 minute mark. Uh, made of recycled plastic, illuminated Kia, which is really cool. And then on the side, lock, unlock, power lift gate, and panic button. <coughs> you okay? <laughs> yeah, I think I need some water. I've been talking for forever. Um, IPLT said, please don't charge to 100% unless you're going on a trip. Yes, so it is recommended to keep your vehicles charged between 20% and 80% just as a best practice. Um, of course, if you do have a long trip ahead of you and you need all possible range, then yes, please charge to 100. Um, also, when we get our vehicles ready for delivery, oh. we charge to 100. Oh, thanks, Tim. <laughs> Uncle Tim, come here. You gotta show your suit. Now you all get to listen to me drink water. Yeah, distract them, Tim. Today's a very fancy day at Brantford Kia. It's a fancy day. Yes. Um, Show the shoes. You got to do like a shoe, a shoe, a shoe, shoe lift. Do a fit. Can you lift your leg that high, Tim? I can kick you in the head from here. Uh, not is, on camera. This is why we keep our videos <laughs> under thirty minutes. We have witnesses. The wheels are falling off. Okay. We had um, we had ugly sweater day, so I did ugly suit day. Yeah, you're right. It's pretty ugly. And uh, mission accomplished. Said, <laughs> <laughs> this is what I have to go through every day. Oh boy. So we were just talking earlier. Charlotte is going to start being full time again here today. Um, I think Tim's going to leave. <laughs> he can't do it anymore. Tim's, Tim's going to quit. With both of us here all the time? Uh-uh. Yes, um, we just didn't have to have a separate building for the media and video department now. Amen. <laughs> uh, James Bond that. said, all black, who died? <laughs> Tim sense of style. <laughs> Tim <Goodbye. Sandy. laughs> All right, uh, but we're uh, on our what, live what you right guys, now. What are you guys wearing? <laughs> oh. oh, boy. What's your favorite thing, Charlotte? You. Womp womp. Womp womp. <laughs> okay. I can't believe that happened live. So sorry, I, I can. <laughs> um, again, if you're new to this channel, you never seen one of our videos before. Subscribe, please. Don't let that please. stop you from subscribing. <laughs> All right. All right. I saw the Bunny House mentioned that he has two Kia Borregos, which I love the Kia Borrego. We were just talking know. about that today. We were talking about the Borrego today, mm -hmm. so that's pretty awesome. 
Um, let's see. A lot of people are, you know, remarking on the fact that it has the fingerprint integration, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. Um, now to fully, I guess, just talk about it, we would have to have the car set up to Kia Connect because that's yes. where, you know, the um, fingerprint metrics actually come into play. And we just can't do that because this is not our car. As much as we wish it was, it's not. Um, <laughs> uh, wow, there's so many comments. So many comments. This is great. Thank you guys so much for watching mm -hmm. and for sticking with us. So undeniably, there's going to be no way we can answer all these questions today. Like I mentioned, we will do a live on this vehicle again on Friday if you want to ask them there. Alternatively, if you can't join Friday's live and you still want your questions answered, leave them below as a regular YouTube comment and we will get to it as soon as we can. Um, <laughs> mesh seat. Hey, is there AC in the chair? No, it's a passenger blowing in your ear. <laughs> oh, actually, it's both. <laughs> So both the front driver and passenger seats are heated and ventilated. So again, super crazy to see on a more entry trim level. I don't even want to call it entry because it's certainly not. Um, can you adjust leg room in the middle row of seats? You can. So there is a bar beneath the mm -hmm. seat um, that you'll just give it a pull and then you can adjust where the seat sits on the rail system. Um, we'll show that probably more in depth on Friday's video yep. where we'll go in depth on all your questions. People are asking if you can get different rims for your EV9. There you go. You don't like these rims? <laughs> um, I will say... I understand that totally they're not for it. everyone. Yeah. The whole basic or basis behind them is the aerodynamic mm -hmm. efficiency. So, of course, EV tires are going to help a little bit with efficiency, but the actual wheel itself is going to create positive airflow so nothing gets caught. There's no drag. Um, they're just, yeah, it's it's different. It's totally different. Yeah, you don't, um, if you buy this vehicle, you don't have the factory option to go and buy another set, but you can always buy it aftermarket. Totally. And then I'd probably still put EV tires on it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Ryan wants to know if I could see over the dash. I could. Um, so great thing about these seats, they're super adjustable, height-wise, recline-wise. You'll be able to see for sure. If you're short, if you're tall, you're going to fit comfortably in this vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, EV9 has a digital key, so you use your near field communication phone, it will turn on. Yes, that's another great thing to point out. Again, we can't utilize that feature right now because it's not our car, mm -hmm. but essentially, so it's near digital key too. Mm -hmm. So you don't even have to really have your phone out of your pocket for it to open. Mm -hmm. That is going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, you can start your car, um, share it with friends. Uh, we did get a comment the other day saying, oh, great, like Kia, because the theft thing in the States, now they're allowing you thing. to just send your key to anybody. No, um, there are some safety measures in place for yeah. sure. You can't just airdrop your phone key to whoever you want. It's not like that. Also, as far as the USB theft thing, we've talked about it countless times. Not a thing in Canada. All vehicles have anti-theft immobilizers on them since early, early 2000s. Yeah. You can, good luck trying it. You can't really good, do it. Good luck. <laughs> Um, Kyle Buller actually made a great point. Frunk is larger in that unit due to it being a rear, rear wheel drive yeah. model. The all wheel drive has a smaller frunk, which is completely true. And that's because you have the additional motor in the front end of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so big on this one, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Do we have the brochures available yet? No. So as of right now, I checked this morning, there is no online brochure for the Kia EV9 on Kia Canada's website. However, there is a build and price and under the build and price, you can look at all the feature specifications mm -hmm. where that's where you'll see what comes in what trim and is it worth going up, down, whatever it may be. Um, can you use voice command to play a specific song stored on a USB stick? I remember being able to do so on my 2012 Kia Sportage. So I haven't tried it on a USB drive for no. music, but I do know if your phone's connected, you can say Spotify, Shuffle, and then whatever artist, or play mm -hmm. a specific song, sp play a specific podcast. So you can still use functions like that for sure. Um, Luis said, all I want for Christmas is an EV9, and me and you both... Same. I think on I mean, that note, maybe we should end today's video. Yeah, <laughs> Christmas came a little bit early in the fact that we're able to film one today, but mm -hmm. um, thank you guys for sticking with us for almost 45 minutes yes. as we went through the EV9, our first look. This is really mine and Gabby's first look at it too, and mm -hmm. we will be back with this vehicle on Friday to show you guys a little bit more. So. 
Come back Friday, 2 p.m., bring your questions, and let's have fun talking about it. Mm -hmm. Um, as we start to receive more EV9 product, we'll get obviously different trim levels, different colors. You can expect to see each and every single one that we receive because, I mean, it's been a while since we've had a fun car to film. Or just anything new. Uh, yeah, a car period. Oh, here's Pat. <laughs> Another surprise guest. Hey, hey Evie. I thought we were done, sorry. No, oh, we okay. are not done. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, thank you for joining today's live video. We hope to see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.